You ever listen to yourself? Like, on the, yeah, it's awful. I am, so, I don't know how you guys listen to me. Like, I am so nasally. By the way, you're live. No, I know. That's okay. They're already watching it. They already know. I do, and it's terrible. I tried to, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go watch a few things to like, critique myself. I got like a minute in. I hate myself. So, okay. Well, that's good. That's good. I guess I'm not, uh, I don't know how we got started that way. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? I am super excited because the snow is here, finally, and I love snow. What I don't like is like the cloudy, misty, just forever wet, but it's not really raining. It doesn't really know. It's like bipolar weather. That I can't stand. But when winter is snowy, and now like the forecast has like two inches of snow every day and some two inches plus every day, I'm just I'm happy. It's great. Benjamin and I uh, and Brittany made a snowman with like the little bit of snow that we had, and we used the whole yard. Like I was rolling this ball of snow just like all over the place, and Brittany's like, "What are you doing?" And this, I mean, like this thing was almost as tall as me. It was awesome. It kind of ended up though that uh, Ben didn't really like understand what we were doing, so uh, he kind of gave up. So really, it was just Brittany and I making the snowman. So, anyways, I think he he talked about it later, so I think he enjoyed it. Okay, are we woken up? Did I wake you up? We're ready to go. Okay, so today, um, last time we turned about, we talked about eternal salvation. Um, we went over this chart for a long time. Today I want to go into his purpose, um, and we're going to use a verse in 2 Timothy, so feel free to go over to 2 Timothy right now. Um, we'll read the verse, and then uh, we'll pray, and we'll get started. Second Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 9, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not as a doorbell? Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Let's pray. Uh, Dear Lord, we're just so thankful for this book, uh, that we can understand what it is that you are doing, what your purpose is. Um, I pray that uh, today... Going through your scriptures will be profitable for all of us. I thank you for those in this room that uh, have the same faith, the mutual faith, and that we can just come together and uh, practice that faith and just be, be together and, and be helpers of our joy together. And all these things, amen. Okay, so we're going to go through this. I, we're, I, you know, as always when I write these, um, I want to talk about his purpose but I also want to go into the context of this verse so that we understand what the context is and we can really understand some things. So hopefully we'll get through all this, but it doesn't matter. We'll have next time. We can go through the rest of it if we don't. Um, but I, I, I want to look at his purpose here in that verse that we just read, but I want to rewind a little bit and start in verse 6. Okay, so chapter 1, verse 6. Wherefore, I put the... In remembrance, uh, let's, let's start in verse 5, I like that better. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and then mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that, is, that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So verse 6, right? He want, He's trying to... Uh, He's writing to Timothy, okay? And in Timothy here, 
Uh, clearly, he, need, he's, he needs to remember the gift of Christ that he has. Now, there's some things about putting on of the hands here. We're not going to address that today, but that is a, a fun study if you ever look into that. Um, but we all have the gift, of Christ, the gift of Christ, right? In this room, I'm assuming you're saved. Um, if you're not, I come find me. We can talk about it. Um, but he's telling, he's telling uh, Timothy here, Stir up the gift of God. And he's going to explain to Timothy, how do you do that? Okay, I want, Timothy, I don't want you to forget this gift of God that we have. Okay, it's in thee. And we all have that. We have this, we have this book. Okay, verse 7. Um, I think I... Yeah. Um, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Okay, uh, I mean, in general, decide, making decisions in life based on fear is typically not a good thing. That's not necessarily what he's talking about right here. He's talking about our Christian life and, and, and this gift, and he's trying to tell Timothy how to stir up this gift in him. Let's remember. But instead of the spirit of fear, instead of your Christian life being out of fear, what is it supposed to be? But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay? Um, it, we're, I want you to grab Romans 1. Romans 1, you, but keep your hand in Timothy, if you can. If not, you know where it is. Romans 1. And I want you to see here the power. And it, this goes right hand in hand with Timothy here. Verse 16, okay? Romans 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the what? Of the gospel of Christ. What is it? For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay, so we don't have the spirit of fear. The, the gospel that we've heard is not one of fear to put your your Christian life into bondage. But what is it? It is of power. And what does the power of God have? Well, the gospel of Christ explains the power. And what is it unto us? Salvation, right? The power of God is salvation to us. It's, it's, it's God's life giving resurrection to us, His righteousness, His life is in you. The power of the gospel... <laughs> Uh, unto us is salvation. So instead of focusing on this uh, this fear-based Christian life, what do we focus on? We focus on what it is that we trusted in, right? We focus on the fact that uh, this life. I mean, don't we all kind of feel? I mean, I always. There's a reason that you feel like the same age all the time, right? Your body might uh, be getting older. But the inside parts of you are eternal. Okay? And so, don't go to a place where we're fearful in your Christian life, where you do things based on, am I, am I afraid? What well, we'll see in the context here, what he's afraid of. But we don't have to have fear. We can have. We, we need to remember that there's resurrection, and this life is not the end, right? We are eternal. There's a reason you you already feel that way, okay? And the love of Christ, which is shed abroad in our hearts, and of a sound mind. He goes on to explain as he goes throughout this chapter of what those things are. Verse eight, okay. Um, so in order to so knowing those things, and in order to stir up this gift that's in you. What do we have in verse 8? Be not thou therefore. So because of these things, therefore, ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Well, that's pretty much what we read in Romans 1 there, right? Nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. So in order to stir up this gift and not have a spirit of fear, what are the things you need to focus on? Instead, embrace the testimony of the Lord. Right? The gospel of the Lord. The testimony there. Embrace the identity that you have in Christ. Focus on those things and what that produces in you. 
And we talked last time or a couple during Thanksgiving about the thankfulness we have in Christ, right? The thankfulness, you start focusing on who you, who you are in Christ, well, all of a sudden, that produces joy, okay? And that produces, all of a sudden, you don't have to be ashamed of the testimony, okay? Um, don't be ashamed of those that believe with you, and that's Paul here. Paul is, is, what happened to Paul? What does he say he is? He's a prisoner, right? He's a prisoner, don't be ashamed. Uh, we, we're not living with Paul at the time, but we're all together. I'm not ashamed of most of you, okay? <laughs> Just making sure you're awake. <laughs> okay? Don't let, we're, we're in this together, okay? Let's not be ashamed of each other, but let's, let's remember the joy that we have together. Be thou partaker of the afflictions, okay? Um, Embrace the trouble that comes with this message. This message is going to come with with troubles if you live it, right? It's kind of like that verse that we looked at in in Colossians there, where we we studied that last time. Like, if you're going to walk this way, well, guess what? Over here, if you're going to walk this way, what is going to happen to you? Afflictions, problems. And why is that? Well, the idea of this gospel is in direct opposition to how the world thinks and the way it works and the way that it, the way that it operates, okay? And we all once were in that world of thinking, right? We all thought that way, and then we saw the light, and that's what we need to remember. Stir it up, Timothy. Let's look at this. Let's look at this gift that you have. All right, and how do we uh, we embrace these afflictions that come our way as it is part of the gospel due to its opposition, right? And the the way that the world does and thinks and works, but guess what? It's also the very answer to the afflictions it brings, right? And you're going to see that here, okay? The gospel gives you the answer to how to deal with the afflictions that come your way. And there's a, there's a lot to unpack there, okay? And I hope we can talk about that as we, we, if we have time today. So you can embrace it. Instead of running and, and, and having that spirit of fear, instead, look at the power that's in the gospel that you have. That's resurrection. Man, how, I mean, how much joy could come out of that, right? The love of Christ. Anywhere you go, you have the love of Christ, Instead of having fear and going, oh my gosh, if I do the wrong thing, Christ hates me here. If I do the right thing, hopefully he likes me, right? What do you do instead? Christ loves you, right? Anything you do, he's going to love you. Why? Because you're in him. No man hated himself, right? And then have a sound mind, okay? The sound mind here is the word of God. Right? You can have the mind of Christ. I feel like I say that every time I'm up here because it's so important. Because you go from one Sunday to the next Sunday from us all meeting together, and what happens? It's easy to forget that, right? If you're not in the Word every day. So verse 9, and this is where I started this whole thing. Who hath saved us? So it ends in verse 8. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Right? And the power of God, verse 9, does what? Who hath saved us. Like, that's what we've been talking about. It saved you. You're already saved. The afflictions that come your way, yeah, they're, they're, it's not that the afflictions are like, you know, this yay afflictions, right? But the afflictions that come your way don't have, they're, they're just a light affliction, right? They're not eternal. You've already won, Okay? He saved us from those things. And yes, we're going to go through them. And we're, I hope to talk about that. And called us with a holy calling. This is not, not according to our work. So it's not a calling that, you know, uh, the church is so great because we just do all these good works ourselves and you should come here and be part of the works that we're doing, right? Uh, what are, what's the calling that we have? What's the gospel? What? Who's doing the work here? Christ, right? Not according to our works. Uh, 
And, and this is knowable, right? This, this calling is knowable. Um, and I say that because, oh, man, I, I just can't get it out of my mind. When I go to the coffee house, okay, and I do some of my studying there, all day long I, I have to put headphones in because I just can't. Like, I want to just, like, reach across the table, and I know it's the wrong thing. But I hear these people all around me. For whatever reason, this is, like, all the people that go to this church down the street uh, from us, they, like, meet there. And uh, they're all there. And all they like, well, when I'm quiet, I can hear the Lord. And that's I have to make sure I have a quiet time in my day so I can hear Him. Right? My point is, is that we have a holy calling, and it's not according to our work. So apparently, you gotta you gotta do some things the right way to hear the Lord and understand His calling. Look, this is not the calling. The, call, the calling is to everybody, right? We I don't have to go to those verses, do I? We're good there, right? <laughs> the calling is to everybody, right? It's just uh, as Ray put it last week, which I thought was I never thought about that analogy before, so that was great. Um, the train is leaving, right? If you hear the call, you can get on. And if you don't, well, then you're not going, right? But that train is predestined, okay? A holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own what? Purpose. He has a purpose and grace. He has a purpose. Like I said, I have to say that with this because Christianity can't read this, unfortunately, and go hey, this holy calling is to everyone. They want to make it about themselves, right? And so you've got to understand what his purpose is. The power of God saves you, and it saves you not only from outside trouble, but it also saves you from yourself, Right? It's His work that saves you. And this, is, you know, this is what makes it holy. We can't produce anything holy outside of God in our own fleshly, sinful bodies. We can only produce what? Vanity and death on our own, right? And that, I mean, that's clear, right? Since the beginning of time, or since God reset it with Noah, we have just been getting, what? More and more and more into trouble, Right? Man thinks, likes to think we're getting better and better and better. The world is more connected and, and has issues all over the place than ever before, right? We're still talking all the time. Every time I turn on, there's some nuclear thing over here. South Korea's got this. This has got that. Whatever, right? The world is a destructive place, right? And, we, and, when, and when you look into history, what, is, what does mankind's history of the world tell you? It tells you that we've been, they tell you, oh, we've just been getting better and better and better. Look at technology. Look at this. Look at that. We know. And then, you know, there's like this side history over here where people are going, you know what? We keep finding things that these people in the past were way more advanced than we ever thought. Okay? We are only getting worse and worse and worse. Right? And you only see the view of history that way if you look at it through man's eyes. Okay, we are becoming more and more sinful, okay? And we tell ourselves that we're getting better and better and better. But he has a purpose, right? He has a purpose at all this. God grabs a feet da, da, da. grab Ephesians one. <clears throat> Man, that must be controlling the uh the people upstairs, the little ones, because I don't hear her, like, I kind of got used to the, like, trembling is like, hey, we're studying. All right, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 1. Yeah, some, it's the law up there. It's the only way to deal with children, right? Uh, verse, verse number 9. Having made known unto his, uh, blah, blah, blah. having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. It's his work that does it. It's his purpose. 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom we also have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now, I know we've read that verse a million times. He's talking about his purpose there. There is a purpose that Christ has, right? And he's been, he's been over the history of time. We've now gotten to a place where we, we, have, we can understand his purpose, what he was doing all this time, right? We understand how he's going to work all things after the counsel of his own will. We understand how he's going to gather everyone up. Right? How he's reconciling the whole entire universe, heaven and earth, back to him. Right? And he's doing it justly. He's not doing it like, you know, like the Greek mythology where, you know, they just do whatever they want and they they they're the gods and you know it's not like he got rid of I I say this all the time. It's not like he got rid of our sin by just saying, No, it's all good. Right? I love you guys, it's cool. No, what did he do? He took care of it. The right way. The only thing that would suffice the justice of God. He actually went through and did it. Right? He's not like, you know, just just signing it off. Hey, Sam's good. Right? He actually took care of it so that you could do it. This isn't like... We would never come up with this story if this is how we did. Greek mythology, all those other things going on, that's the story that we would write. Right? You have to be a good person. You have to do this. You have to worship the gods. Whatever. You know, whatever. His purpose, he's worked it all out, okay? And all you got to do, like that example says, is get on the train. And then while you're on the train, well, you should open this up so you can learn where you're going, what you're doing, what you're a part of, right? This isn't, this isn't just where we meet once a week together, right? This is, this is where we talk about the mutual faith together, and we practice it out. We, we practice that grace with each other, right? But... You guys each go home every day, and you can you read this, and you put this in your mind every day, right? You can only make it yours by studying it yourself. And it's according to the purpose of Him. Not your purpose, right? Not your fleshly desires. I'm going to read this so that I become a better person. That is Christianity, right? They'll talk about how Jesus walked and how he was great. They'll talk about how Jesus was, he, he healed and he did all these good things, which are all great things, by the way. But he had a purpose in them, and he was accomplishing what? The cross. Nobody wants to talk about the cross, right? And if they do, it's kind of like superficial, right? He had a purpose, and he's reconciling all those things. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 28. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to what? His purpose. This is all over the place. Okay, it talks about his purpose. You don't need to go and be quiet in the corner to understand what his purpose is. It's written right here. Everyone wants this special instruction. We all have the special instruction. It's right here. Hallelujah. Right? What does it say there? And we know that what? All things work together for the good. It doesn't mean that all things that happen are necessarily good. Right? If I go and do a bunch of sinful things, well, that sinful thing is not a good thing. Right? But guess what? I'm on the train, and I'm going, and it's going to work out for good because that train is predestined. That, pre- that, that train is called everyone, right? But you've got to get on. Verse 
So now that now all things, whether they be good or sufferings in your life, will work out to something good, right? Will be in the end. We all know that's going to be taken care of. It will work for His purpose. Before you were straight, headed straight to where? What train were you on before? Yeah, yeah. So what? And 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 now you're part of His purpose, and you have. You have some things that you can do, and he has things that he's planning to do, right? And you could be part of being an ambassador that is helping with the call, right? And therefore, you can now have a life that can be used by God through you, right? By Jesus Christ through you. You're part of reconciling the world. It's not you reconciling the world. It's Christ through you. But only if you get in the Word and realize that, right? How many people get saved and then they just kind of live the rest of their life? Right? Well, guess what? They're on the train, still working out to good. But you have a position. He's putting you in a, a governmental position already, which is an ambassador, to be um, present. In, you know, you're you're going to be present in this evil world. That's, and what, is, what does Romans 8 say before it here? Just in this, what is this world doing? What is it? Verse 22, right? For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now. Remember, the kingdom is not here yet, right? This whole world is still something. It's still uh, a disaster, let's put it that way, right? And we did it that way, not God. But now you're part of that reconciling salvation, and... um, you know, if you stick your head out far enough, you're going to have some afflictions. And most of the issues we have in this country are not, like I said that before, right? <clears throat> most of the issues in this country are not, uh, you know, because of the gospel. They're just sinful and, you know, finding a parking spot at the store during the holidays is just difficult. Okay, that's just how it is. Okay? I actually, And I say it that way because I actually have friends who think that if they get a good parking spot, it's because of God. <clears throat> and hey, they, th- that's their, I, I, I should say this when I say that, because I don't want you to think I'm, I'm judging the thinking, right, as, as wrong. But, but, you know, they, they're living what they understand, okay? And we have to come to an understanding of what is going on, and that's what we're called to do. But you stick your neck out, and Timothy, Paul's talking to Timothy here, you're going to get sufferings. But be partakers of the suffering, because guess what? The gospel is going to take care of it. Okay? Um, and anything that does happen to you is going to work out for good. Right? That's what that, His purpose is going to make it good. Okay? And we have faith in that. That when we know for sure, and our hope is that it all works out good. Um, the next verse here, he, he, he's, verse 29, for him he did foreknow, right? He already knew all this. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So you become part of his son here, and he conforms you. He makes you a new creature. He, it's uh, like, it's kind of the, it's the same language as, um, like we just went and, and painted pottery, of which, uh, well, never mind. Uh, I just say I, the, the the colors that I chose are a little girly, but uh, it's a good looking pot. Okay, it looks great. Uh, it looks great in our room, right, Brittany? Um, but we just went and did some pottery, right? God conforms you. That's that's what you do with clay. We are dirt. We are dirt people, right? And He conforms you as being part of the image of the Son here, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then we also called, and whom he called, what did he do? Justified. Justified, that's right. And whom he justified, he what? Okay. What shall we say then? Say, what shall we say then? What shall we say then? Say, 
What shall we then say, wow, to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Same thing he's saying to Timothy here, right? Look, Timothy, stir up the gift. How do you, what, this is the power of God is in you from this gospel. And he's doing something. Go over to Romans 9, verse 17. 9, 17. I think that's right, yeah. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared through all the earth. Okay, so what, what, he had a purpose in what he was doing with Pharaoh, right? For one, we're in chapter 9 here, so what he's explaining, the body of Christ, he, he, we're, this is how Israel relates to the body of Christ. Okay, the next, that's the context of what this is set in. Okay, and there's this, there's this uh, kind of a delay principle here that God always has. And I think it's interesting here that he uses that example. Okay, um, for one, he, he, he judges Pharaoh, right? But how long did Israel have to, did it, did it just like, hey, they had some sufferings and right away God just came down? No, right? What happened? There was this delay, this sufferings. And what 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 was the reason for the what was the reason for the delay? He had a purpose. So that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So I, I hope I explain this correctly, because sometimes I mix up my words here or my thoughts. There was, there was a delay, right? And they had sufferings. Israel was going through some suffering times there. But the sufferings were just a light affliction compared to what God was doing, right? God was raising that. We go through sufferings now too, right? Our hope is that what? It's going to be taken care of. When, I, when, we, when we teach uh, Benjamin things, which I hope Benjamin gets help from someone else because me teaching Ben is a scary thing. <laughs> but when we teach Benjamin things, you know, you can only tell a kid so much before they kind of just have to go through it themselves, right? Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Well, what do they do? They go do it, then they get hurt, and you go, well, I told you. I, I don't know. I mean, I told you not to put your hand there. The thing smashed your hand. I don't know, Right? There's sufferings that you kind of got to go through. There's sufferings that we're here in, and we're lear- what are we learning? We're the children of God, right? What are we learning? We're learning what God saved us from, right? We're in this already, and there's this delay principle. I mean, how long is the body of Christ? How long is the rapture not come for? Well, I mean, we're 2,000 years. Okay? And there's... but. What is, what is that also building up to? Well, for here, the delay principle for Israel was that he could show his power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. What is he doing in the body of Christ? So that his name can be declared throughout all the Gentiles, right? Magnify his name. There's a, there's a delay. And the sufferings that we go through, one, we get to learn what we're getting saved from because, hey, we did this on our own, right? But two, we get to be partakers of what he's doing. We can make it our own through him. I hope I'm saying that the right way. We can understand what his purpose is. Right? We can can become ministers. We have a ministry. He gives us the ministry of reconciliation. Right? We can be him ambassadors for him here and now we're we're partakers in this affliction right and his purpose is 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 to do what go to first john three first john three
he has a purpose, and he's going to do it the right way. Okay? We were rightfully the devils, right? We were rightfully belonged to him, and he bought us back. First uh, John 3, 8, He that committeth sin is of the what? The devil. For the devil sinneth from the what? The beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. You've been saved from that. You've been saved from your own wicked works. You were alienated in your mind. And now... You're being saved from that. That's what he's doing. You're part of his purpose. You're on the train. Ephesians 3. Do we go to Ephesians 3 already? No, we went to Ephesians 1, right? Ephesians 3, verse 11... In whom we have boldness. Uh, let's let's go to verse. Let's go to verse nine. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers and heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. There is a purpose to what He's doing. Right? He didn't just create a bunch of people that just follow his will and he made them, right? He made people that can choose God. And he let us, he let us choose the wrong thing. And then he's going to show them why he's worthy. And he knows that his the love of Christ there, that we'll see that and we'll choose him. But this but there's something, right? What what are we what are we creating today? What what is like the big buzzword of today. Everything, everyone, every business, everyone, I mean, even the coffee house. When I go to the coffee house, they talk, there's people like with meetings and they're trying to get AI into their company and they have meetings about that, right? But w- when we create, when we create robots, do they really have free will? They just have, they have the logic that we give them, right? <coughs> What did God create? God created a, an entity that could choose on their own. And he wants us to choose him. Right? But something doesn't really love you unless you give them a choice to love you. Right? There's much wisdom to be had here. The wisdom of God. And it's going to be known by who? Us. Right? It's going to be known by those in the church. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers and heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom, the, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness, right? We have certain outcome. And access with confidence by faith of him. Go back to go back to uh, Timothy, Second Timothy. If you're going to stir up the gift, right? You're not going to have a spirit of fear. You got to remember the power that's in Christ, the love that's of, of Christ, and the sound mind that Christ gives you. Okay, we have this spirit. Um, we have. You go. You go read the rest of this chapter, and I hope you do. Um, you get to see what. How, how do you not live in a spirit of fear, but you can live in what? In, in that power and in that love and, and be in a sound mind. And therefore, then now you're not ashamed of his testimony because it brings a joy to your life. It brings a thankfulness to your life. Uh, flip on over to verse or chapter 3, verse 10. Verse 9, but, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. Verse 10, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. Okay, that's, that's the teaching that came through Paul from Christ. 
his manner of life. Remember, I, remember that time we studied the conversation, right? The conversation of Paul's life was this. The purpose of how, how Paul lived his life was this. Purpose, there it is. Faith, right? We, Paul lived according to the hope he had in that gospel. That's how he got through the afflictions, because the gospel takes it away, right? And like I said before, we're, we're left here in our sufferings. Well, guess what? God makes sure that we, we're not going to be tempted more than we can be tempted, right? Then we're able. And so he lives by faith. He knows that what God is doing is, is the right way, right? Even if we don't necessarily always understand it. Long-suffering. He's suffering through these afflictions. See, if God comes back right now and ends it, does the body of Christ get to proclaim the gospel anymore? No, we're taken out, right? The long suffering through these hard times is what allows that gospel to go out. You get to get saved. You get to hear it. Because guess what? What's coming later, not that great to go through, right? The times that the Antichrist rises in, not that great even prior to the tribulation. Okay. Where was I? Verse 10. So long suffering there. Charity. He lived his life. He lived his life with charity, looking out for the others, right? Others minded. And patience. He waited through those sufferings and hope and with with that hope. Persecutions. Okay? Those that's that's a Attacks from him outside, right? That's like corporal punishment kind of stuff, right? Persecutions that were brought to him because he stood for this. Afflictions. Those are, those are problems that come your way with this gospel, right? You, you stand for the gospel, well, you know, necessarily, not necessarily everything in this life is just going to be hunky-dory because, well, this world doesn't work according to that. Which, come, which came unto me in Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, Look, well, we get, let's finish that. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Well, we know in Corinthians there, he asked the Lord to take away some of his things, right? And he didn't. Uh, and he said, when you're weak, you know, I am strong. Well, the Lord is strong through your sufferings because you can't do it. Just like Abraham, you can't make Isaac on your own, Right? I'm the one who's going to do it, and I'm showing that. Okay, so we can suffer persecutions, and the Lord is going to deliver me. Your death is taken care of. You don't have to worry about that. And you should expect afflictions coming your way, but you can live in those in joy because they're just a light affliction, right? We all have them. We all have them, regardless of your age, right? But afflictions... From you standing from this, it just gets harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. And the next thing, uh, you know, either either Satan's going to make you feel lonely or Satan's going to make you feel, uh, you know, other than not getting saved, one of the worst things you can do in your Christian life is just kind of like be mediocre and just kind of like, well, I can't do anything. I'm just going to wait, right? I'm just going to be depressed in the corner. And let this, that's what the spirit of fear does, right? I'm going to just, well, this world's going to hell anyway. I'm just going to sit in the corner. Right? That's what the devil wants you to do. That is exactly what he wants you to do. If you become saved, well, now he's going to make sure that it's hard for you to do anything. And it's going to make you feel lonely. And he's going to make you feel like no one else stands for this. And he's going to, the, the world that you, that what you stand for, the world... He's got the whole world just hating that. I'm trying to think of the word. It's not mediocre that I'm trying to say, but, um, you know, you just kind of become lazy. You don't get in the word, right? If you're not in the word, what's the word? Lukewarm. Lukewarm, that's a good one. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Apathetic. You just, you just kind of, you just, you don't, you're not in the word. You're not letting it become who you are you're not letting christ you're not you're not living in the new man you're just living in the old man waiting for the new man to to kind of just you know come get you right that's what the devil wants okay 
So getting in this word, understand what his purpose is. It's beautiful. Look at all these colors. <laughs> you guys need to smile out there. Maybe I'm being too serious. It's the first session. We can't be serious. Okay? Look, his purpose is wonderful. Um, it's a holy calling. You're part of it, right? You're on the train. So, you know, just like Paul here in verse 10, we, they knew what Paul's purpose was. His purpose was, I'm going to live for the Lord. I mean, look at all the beautiful examples of that in the Old Testament. I mean, look at Daniel. From a young age, Daniel decided, I'm going to stand on the, on the word of the Lord. And when trouble came his way early in life, I mean, chapter 1 there, he's a young kid. What does he do? Hey, he says, I'm, I'm, and when, when trouble comes, see, here's the thing. When trouble comes, he doesn't go, okay, I've got to decide what to do. I don't know what to do. He already has the word of God in him, and he knows how to act. Right? He knows what to tell those rulers. David has issues. David sins, I mean, some of the worst. If David was in here, like, he's a murderer. Right? I don't think any of us, well, I don't think any of us are murderers in here. But maybe. Right? And what does he do? The moment Nathan comes to him, what does he say? Well, basically, the Lord is my salvation. Right? I'm wrong, you're right. He repents, right? He turns around. He knows that the Lord is right. We have faith that our life was useless. We are going to hell. We're on the wrong train. Now we're on the right train. Okay? And you can make his purpose yours. Okay? And there's a wonderful that only produces thankfulness, and that's what comes out of you. Right? We studied that in uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Right? So I won't get into that. Um, it is time to quit. So uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, I'm just so thankful for, for your gift and that cross and, uh, and your death um, taking the place of ours and, and, and your resurrection, your life for us that you give to us. And that we can, we can think on these things every day and be thankful. And um, now we can just get in the book and, and understand what your purpose is. I pray that this uh, message and, and uh, study today was profitable for everyone. And um, all these things. Thanks. Amen.